Welcome in, everybody, to another episode of the DNVR Rapids podcast presented by Avaca TV. I'm your host, Mitchell Carroll, a.k.a. Merchel. And uh, we got a sweet little show lined up today. You notice Yaya's not sitting with me here. He's back behind the ones and twos. Yeah, man. I was about to say, can you, uh, we have Brian just talk to us and I'll like talk for him. Like sure. just mimic all my boys. <laughs> uh, we didn't practice that pregame. Maybe we'll work on it in the second half of the show. But more importantly, we are joined today by the general manager of Rapids 2, Brian Crookham. Welcome to the studio. Well, thank you for having me. Yeah, of course. Yeah. We, uh, I mean, there's obviously a lot to talk about. End of the R2 season. Um, you got a player from R2 in the World Cup, or at least on a World Cup roster, um, playing tomorrow in Daniel Chacon. Um, you've been with the Rapids and worn a bunch of hats for 15 years now. Um, I guess let's start there. So you started in 2007. You've seen basically every step you could possibly see in that, in that organization. Seen a lot of it, yeah. Actually, even before that, 2004, I was one of the first guys on Altitude TV. Right, and it's right. It's kind of crazy to see that uh, that change that's evolving right now as well. But yeah, it's been you know it's been a great ride for me. I've been able to be in an organization that seems to value what I do and and has given me opportunities to continue to grow and and not really have to get up and. Uh, my kids are Colorado natives and, and now headed to college, which is a crazy thing wow. uh, to think of in pro sports to be able to be in one city that long. So uh, I'm honored to be able to, to be with and serve the club for so long. And uh, yeah, we've seen a lot. <laughs> yeah, I mean, of course, Omar, you're the longest tenured guy in that, in that office. How's that feel? Is that, that's, a, that's a nice badge to have on the... Yeah, it's just part of the furniture. They, sure. Yeah, you just watch <laughs> on moving day, you know, it just... They, they might just clean up and uh, sure. put me out to the dumpster one of these days. But no, it's been it, it, the evolution of the club, um, where the club maybe started and where the club is today, yeah. two really different places. And, uh, you know, again, proud to be a small part of what goes on in, uh, <laughs> in Commerce City. Right. Yeah. Before that, I have to shout this out. As a Metro State Roadrunner myself, currently, got to shout it out. You were the head coach at Metro State. Metro State was a great experience for me. It was uh, nine years of uh, working at a great institution with great people, and I still am very close to a lot of people that uh, not only were students on the campus, but you know a lot of people I worked with in in that building. And uh, you know it was a it was a great time in my life, and uh, I was glad that I've again been able to stay in Colorado and. Uh, continue to to be a part of the Colorado life yeah I mean that is to me MSU is so so like actually Colorado sometimes you know you get the Pac-12 school and you got you know I mean I love Fort Collins too but Metro State really embodies it to me and so that's really cool that you kind of seen the growth there into the rapids and yeah absolutely it's, and it's a that was a, a place of opportunity because I I worked with guys like Mike Dunlap who was the men's basketball coach who went on Obviously, coaching Charlotte in the NBA, Loyola Marymount's now back in the NBA, and um, you learn from from everybody that's in that environment. And, right. And so, you know, it was a really big growth time for me, and uh, that's awesome. Real, really fun time to be there. Lo I love it. Great uh, athletic facilities too, right there, like in between Sixth and Colfax. Yeah. Nice, now nice. that didn't exist no, when I was there. there. They didn't have dorms. They didn't have. You know, we shared a, a soccer field with a baseball team, and <laughs> you took the fence team. down out in the outfield. And hey, that, that could win you. Uh, that could win you an MLS. Cup you, maybe, never right? yeah. you never know. You never know. Maybe we should be inquiring about the rented course field and uh, and doing double duty there. Um, so you're also you're a licensed A level coach. Yeah. Uh, you were the technical director for Colorado Youth Soccer. So even below college soccer, you were running the youth program there, or technical director for the youth program. Yeah, I worked with, again, great people there. I worked a lot in the Olympic Development Program wow. and, and with some great players and, and some guys that have come through the system and, and played in MLS from that end of it. Did a lot in coach education uh, at that level. And, again, uh, really enjoyed the people I was with. And, and you know, it, it, this has just been a, a state full of opportunity, not only for myself, but, uh, you know, a lot of people that have come through the that Colorado soccer scene, whether it be at the college level, at the – at the high school or the uh, club level, you know, it's yeah. uh, just it's a stateful opportunity, and guys now realizing their dreams, like like Ethan Horvath and 
all the all the girls yeah. that are in the women's national team. Uh, you it, could build a whole too many team to name, it, yeah. you know. So <laughs> it's uh, uh, again, it's uh, you know, it's it's just been a good ride here. Yeah. So what? You know, how, when is it time to move on to the next part of Colorado soccer? Is it just new opportunity shows up, kind of want to make a jump? Because, you know, you've worked with the youth team, with college, with the pros, with the academy. And it's, you know, there's all sorts of different things you've done with there, all within the realm of Colorado soccer and kind of building the larger scope of Colorado soccer. You know, is there any rhyme or reason or just sort of new opportunity? Let's go for it. I think it's always opportunity. Um, again, I've been fortunate to be around really good people that, um, you know, helped me develop as a person, as a, you know, whether it was as a coach, now as an administrator and somebody that, that kind of sits more in the front office side of it. And mm -hmm. as those opportunities come up and, you know, you kind of collect different skill sets and, and, the right fit just seems to continue to come along within the organization. So um, at this point, until they kick me to the curb, I'm, <laughs> I'm going to still uh, – it used to be you looked at USA Today and look, read that transactions column mm -hmm. to see if you still had a job. And if you did, you <laughs> you go to work. And uh, so far that hasn't said uh, I love you know, that. that I don't need to go to work today. So, right. Yeah. Right. So before we get into it, I have to see one more thing. So you were at, you were at Altitude. You were one of the first – uh, to kind of build the the altitude broadcasts of Rapids. Now with that going away, well, not altitude going away, but the Rapids going away from altitude because of Apple Plus, um, do you have any thoughts on, on the new change in, in how they're going to be broadcasting the MLS? I know it sucks to see uh, Cello go and to see Fleming go and, and how integral they were within the club, but do you see the Apple TV as, as a plus in terms of accessibility to the game? Sad to see the altitude guys go. Kind of where where, where have you landed on that in this off season? Yeah, I mean, uh, it's going to be a sentimental thing for me. I mean, it's not just it's not just Joe and Rich who have done right. a tremendous job, but it's guys like Scott Bay that produced and and Brian Peters and Lee Blair, guys that were still involved um, today with other productions, but mm -hmm. were behind the scenes and and really had to work at promoting the league and and those local broadcasts were really key at one point to us kind of growing as a league and, and now this evolution i'm sure we're going to get more bells and whistles i'm, I'm sure we're going to get things that um we, we didn't have available to us in the past but you know i'm i'm still partial to the guys that got us here and, absolutely uh, and so it'll be an interesting we i don't think we know um the impact this will have or the access or you know how it's going to go what i do know is that apple's made a a great investment in our league um and i think we're all excited about the opportunity to continue to grow that and probably grow that as much, you know, outside of our borders. We deal with people every single day in the, in my world where we're dealing with agents or, or clubs all over the world. And they now have more and more access to looking at video of our players. Sure. And, and, um, you know, we're, we're kind of in that world anywhere I go in the world, it seems like I can still flip on a, an MLS match and, and that's not going to get, less it's going to get more as we go so right. you know it's an exciting time for the league it, big deals in the league that help prop up everything we're doing sure. um either from a visual from an excitement from an access standpoint are always positive and uh so we'll see how see how the next 12 months go but sure. uh, i think it's an exciting step for sure yeah and then you know in terms of prop up they have an entirely new league just finished its debut season in in mls next pro um which now you are the general manager for Rapids 2. Um, talk about being on like the forefront of something, right? Like not much of a job description or much to go off of, of building a developmental professional roster like that, right? You kind yeah. of are paving the way there a little bit. I'll be honest with you. It's, it's a, it was a little bit like what happened in, in coming out of the 2006 season, you know, the league, kind of put together their their player development programming mm -hmm. mandate to the to the clubs and so in 2007 when when I was fortunate enough to come into the club um, to start the academy programming that we had there wasn't a script to that so it was right, uh, right, right. it was basically you've got about three weeks to get teams on the field good <laughs> luck to you and then the development academy came along so it was a new league it was something that was on a a national scale and again there wasn't much of a script and so i think we we're a little bit versed at, at um you know building the airplane while we're flying it right now and that's um, such a good one and, and we say that we've said that so much this right. year because not only did this happen at the 
Um, it was late coming at the league level. This time last year, we didn't have any staff hired. We didn't okay. even have. We were just getting confirmation we were going to get U.S. Soccer's <laughs> okay. blessing on the league and, and the divisional standards. And we literally walked into December last year saying we're pretty sure this is going to happen. Oh, um, no. And you know, I spent my Christmas break uh, interviewing people and trying sure. to get staff on board for a preseason that was happening in a couple of weeks. So, you know, I, I'm really proud of our staff and, and the, the people that came together and just said, look, whatever it takes over the next six months, mm-hmm. eight, eight months, we're going to get it done. What we knew, though, mm-hmm. is we knew that what we do on our own site with our own players um, is first and foremost what's going to drive our success. Right, and we, right. So we can control that. It doesn't matter what league you're playing in. It doesn't matter if we're in USL or NML, MLS Next Pro or anything else. If we get the environment right every single day with our players, and if we're able to move players into the right spots every day, if we're able to communicate across our staffs and make sure that we, we get it all right from the first team through the second team through the academy, we're going to be successful. And I right. think you know credit to everybody for just jumping on board and saying whatever it takes this time. And We'll be better next year at what we're doing, but um, sure. but I'm awfully uh, proud of what the staff did to accomplish what they did accomplish this year. Yeah, what so, would you, um, oh, go for it. Sorry, yeah, real yeah, quick. No, absolutely. So you were in charge of like getting the staff for Rapids too, correct? Correct. Um, where did you look for that staff? Were you looking at the USL? Like, were you looking at other uh, MLS squads, or were you looking more like in town at like maybe like somewhere like Real Colorado and stuff like that? Like, the, where- the answer is yes. I mean, we were looking for you know best available, sure, and, and in sure. some cases. Um, you know, we hired a head coach that came out of our academy that had proven himself in that player development realm out of our academy. Our athletic trainer came out of our academy, excuse me. And I think, you know, because philosophically we know what we want as a club, it's not just a player development system. We have a, we have a situation where we can develop staff from within that will support our values and, and the philosophy that we have as a club. And so a couple of the pieces came from in there. You mentioned USL. Our team administrator came from USL. Great experience in traveling and organizing teams that don't get to fly charter. You know, they right, have to right, have to slog right. through the airport and figure out how many bags they're going to check. And, you know, what what are the bag fees on this deal? And, and, and you know, those are realities of, of a – lower division club which is what this is and and the registration and and literally turning in forms and stuff like that and so we went to other mls clubs for uh, you know our our, uh strength and conditioning coach came out of another mls club our video um analyst came out of a youth club in town happened to be a partner of our so your question is exactly what what we did. We went to to every resource available, tried to find the best fit um, for what we had, and uh, we we got a USL a, a, a PR person from USL. So like we we went and reached into every corner um, and found some pretty damn talented people that could come in and help us straight off the bat. That reminds me a lot more of a like. People see this like a, kind of an academy at times, the Rapids too, because they feel it's connected. To me, it's more like a Barcelona B because you guys are growing within. You guys are kind of doing everything together. But Games it's also a, a completely players, yeah. different team. Like it's still like uh, it's organ. But I feel like people have this misconception about Rapids too, that it's just kind of another academy team. Yeah, and, and, and I think sometimes we do run across that con- that misconception. But this is a professional franchise. We have to meet – all the professional standards that are set forth by U.S. Soccer to play in the division that we play in, um, you know, there is a a pressure. We want our guys playing in a league, playing in a team where there is a pressure to win and lose. We need to entertain fans. We need to come out and and play for points in a league that has playoffs and try to achieve something in a oh, league yeah. like that. And, and it's got to be a proving ground. It can't be our under-17s turning into an under-18 team. Sure, and sure. it also can't be just the old reserve league that we were a part of where 
guys just kind of got thrown out of the first team roster on a Sunday morning at 10. Hopefully they had not had enough beers the night before to affect their performance on Sunday. And that's and by the way, three guys from ticket sales and the youth director have to suit up. And all right, great. We're right. here we are. We right, got a, right, we got a reserve right. game. We had to stay away from both of those things. And and so, you know, I think the professionalism of the of the reserve type teams is a big step in player development. There's a lot of money being invested in these academies. There's a lot of money being invested in obtaining young talent at the first team level. So you have to be unbelievably professional in the way you merge that stuff together and create a situation where they can continue to progress and quite honestly create asset value in the in the players that you have there. What would you say you pulled the most from? Was it your time at college? Because you are trying to find, it's not necessarily recruiting, right? But you are kind of scouring for the guys that haven't jumped over to like European academies and stuff like that. Or is it more your time with the first team at Rapids? You know, where, where are you really pulling the most from that? I, I think you... In terms of building the roster up. When you get to be an old guy like sure. me, you, you draw on all sure. those experiences. Sure. You know, the, the recruitment side and understand... Listen, in MLS... So I was at Metro State, which is a, a, a Division two school, and we let the big dogs go eat. We let we let whoever University of North Carolina recruit a kid, and and you just stay in touch and you say, hey, you know what? If that doesn't work out, this is we're here for you. Sure, we believe in you. We'd like to invest in you, but we understand you have other options. And sometimes in MLS, you almost feel like that in in a world market that you know what? I'm going to stay in touch, and and for sure. when it doesn't quite go the way you thought it was going to go. Remember, we're here to invest in you. And I think I like sometimes that. that, so so that's something that I certainly got from when I was at the college level. I've worked with great people at the first team level and, and more in the uh, talent identification, the understanding of what it's going to take to be successful in this league. Um, and then I've worked with you know, our, our general manager and our assistant general manager in Porg and Fran and, and Courtney and the people in our front office you know, I think we all complement each other in that and pass on knowledge and, and, and you learn, you know, what how to be effective in, in that realm as well. So again, it's it's taking all the experiences you have and yeah. trying to do the best you can with well, it. Well, and Porg's a guy too who's worn how many hats, right? Across soccer, across continents, across federations. So it is kind of cool to see the between him and you and, and that staff that has been built up has really seen all of it. Yeah, I think so. I think again, I think it's complementary. I think I think we all have traits um, and experiences. Sure. Maybe I've got a little bit more in some of the locker room pieces of it, and other people have other things. And you know, if whether you come from the field, you come from the front office, um, you come from other other parts of the sports business. Listen, the, when you bring all that together, it can be pretty powerful. And I think we're we're in a good spot there. That's awesome. We got a comment here from our guy B Ray. He's always on the on the broadcast here. Uh, he says, "What player in the academy slash Rapids two system are you most excited to see make that leap on the first team?" That's like asking me to choose what pick my favorite, favorite kid, kid is. Yep, Jeez. Yep, pick one right now. All yeah. right, we'll make spot. it easier for you. Who's your favorite kid? <laughs> <laughs> that might be an easier. What question. day There's is less it? Of because them, yeah. yeah, I mean, listen, do, I, do you kind of have to wait till after Thanksgiving to see who shows up to dad? Yeah, <laughs> exactly, exactly. I don't know. It depends on the day there, but and it depends on the day with these players too. But uh, sure. You know, I, I think look, we've got guys. You know, you look at somebody like Adam Beaudry, who's a goalkeeper, that's a unique position in itself. And you look at the demands and the exposure and the things that happen with the young guys from there. And then you flip that to the other end of the field and you look at really dynamic, fun players like Yappy and Toure. And oh, then yeah. the creative and the guys that see the game like Rob Aguirre. Like, to be honest with you, it, every player has his own like little aura and – the things that you want to build on and excite you about them. And, and I, I'll be honest with you. I, I think it's more about the excitement of having a system in place to let these guys express themselves and, and come through the system and, and do a good job. And honestly, our goal is to make sure that the only thing that would really limit them is their talent and then their motivation to capitalize on that sure. talent. And, 
And so, so I'm not gonna pick. So, B Ray, apologize. But um, <laughs> yeah, B Ray, don't uh, be asking not, questions. Not get, <laughs> not I tried. I tried. Uh, I know that you know we we definitely all have some favorites. Obviously, Yaya is a big Yaya guy. Um, the biggest Huge Yaya. Yaya, Yaya guy. Uh, um, I, I, it might be because of the name. It might be because he's really good. But I, I, I think love it's Yaya. A little column A, a little column B, right? Uh, Hanya, we are huge Hanya guys on this podcast. Absolutely. I mean, Yosuke has been fun. Like we're, we're in a situation where you, you have those guys that come from the Academy that we're identifying internally sure. that we want to continue to move forward with. We've got guys from the first team that are, that are dropping in. How, how we get that mix of players that those guys can come up and attach to and come down and attach to is actually a really important part of how we're trying to craft this group. And last year, we only wanted to sign about six guys. We're going to increase that this year. Okay. We're going to go to 10 or 11. And Yosuke is a great example of a kid that maybe got overlooked in the in the college game. Um, we he, got, he came to me through an agent, and it was video, and we're like, this kid – has got something. Let's let's He's get him here. So fun to watch and and see what he can do. And and you know there was a lot of people that just didn't didn't somehow see him or, or recognize what he's got. And I think he's not only been good as an individual talent, but he's been good yeah. in somebody that people can stick to and move forward with. And those are the type of guys that we want in that group: is guys that can not only be a first team talent because they they have to have that potential but also be people that can move the rest of the group forward with them so that we're creating an environment that we get the best out of everybody and they can you know hopefully reach their potential sure. if they reach their potential and we think it's mls potential then we've done something special there when you're building out the roster right obviously it is rapids too right you're under the, the organ the umbrella of the organization and there's loanies up there's loanies down there's a you know a symbiotic relationship there but you're also in a league right and there are playoffs like you said and maybe you know i don't know how you might just say it's both right but winning roster versus developmental roster right like winning games versus getting these guys ready for the next step is there a balance between those two is it all one and the same I, I know it's, because it's because this is a new system too, right? You're only yeah, less than a year it, into it, this. We have this. We or we for a while had this discussion in the academy as well. It, winning is a part of development. I, right. I we will never go teach somebody how to lose sure, and sure, think that sure. we're going to get somewhere <laughs> with them. So you know, I think it's an important. Being competitive is important. You know, I think this group got off to an awful start. It was a from rough a competitive start to the season standpoint. Yeah. But what we knew is that we were able to grow. And if you think about going from the 1st of June until late September without a loss in that group after the start they had, oh, yeah. and not really adding, we actually lost some of the, some access to some of the first team guys as guys like Yappy started to develop, as Anderson and Edwards start getting hurt, as Toure goes on and, and contributes to the first team. But the group continued to kind of come together and progress. And to do that, that's that's the most important part of it. So if you gave me the choice, um, I would say we've got to win. Sure. But this program doesn't exist so that we can win a, a reserve league championship. This, right. this program exists so that we can move assets onto our first team and beyond. So I have a quick question. When you build, when you build, okay, so it's a two part question. <laughs> the second part is going to be more of a get, personal thing. Should I get, just get comfortable? Yeah, yeah you should, like, you should get comfortable. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, <laughs> see, I'm the guy flippers. that's here to trick all our guests to say something they shouldn't say. No, oh, good. We don't, so, not, don't say that in front I'm of I'm saying it in front of guy. Omar because I want Omar to know this. Um, <laughs> they brought my handler so that I'm okay with it. If <laughs> yeah. My lawyer says I can't answer this. Uh, and Omar's up back here just staring daggers at me. Yeah. Yeah. So, First of all, how do you build this squad? Like when you when you're like, okay, you're in charge of building Rapids too for the first time ever. Yep. What what kind of approach did you take on it? And the second question I have after you answer that one is, why haven't you guys brought in any Mexican players, man? Like, come on, I'm waiting. <laughs> I'm waiting for my Mexican uh, Listen, buddy to come up. After the performance today, I might be able to get him cheap. So, oh, I, oh I, that oh, one oh, hurt. Oh, I know boom, Omar's over here roasted, cringing too. Boom, roasted. He, He's got the Boom, jersey on, roasted. and um, you know, let's go. 
I love it. You put me in front of the camera and ask me that. Yeah, I'm I mean, gonna. I'm yeah, gonna he's gonna Before deliver it. He delivered for that, sure. Though, I am kind of curious, like. Obviously, soccer is such a huge world, right? And that's so different from these other sports that we cover here, yeah. where it's like it truly is a world league, and you have colleges, and you have MLS, and you have USL in three different leagues, and you have Canada, Mexico. You know, you, you, it's such a wide net to cast. Yep. But you're also looking pretty specifically, I assume, with Porig yep. to kind of find stuff that fits into the Rapid Senior Team. So yeah, you know, to kind of piggyback Yaya's question there, like when you're casting that net, where do you start? So you start with yourself, and what, what do we want to look like as a club? So when we evaluate what we need in the system, we look at guys that are on the first-team roster that are projected to have minutes in the second team. We look at academy guys that are in the academy but are projected to need second-team minutes as sure. we go. And then we have to build the rest of that roster around that. Mm -hmm. But this is dynamic, right? Mm -hmm. Because you go to preseason – and Abubakar Keita, Brian Galvan, and then all of a sudden all of the Raws. And, you know, all of a sudden we go through injuries and that whole dynamic right, changes. Right. So it's a very dynamic thing. But I think the one thing that we can stick to a little bit is looking at our, our roster and identifying overall needs. And I'm not talking about for Rapids, too. I'm talking about for the club's depth chart, basically. Right, right. And then making sure that so we're not blocking pathways. So, you know, a Darren Yappy or a Yaya Torre or a, a Rob Aguirre or an Adam uh, Beaudry, that those guys actually have a pathway to get themselves to the first team. And, and so those are really important elements as we look to bring players in. Then we look at how do we want to play? Mm -hmm. And if we want to play in a certain style, then we need players that can fit roles to play in that certain style. So then that starts to define the who we're going out to get how we get to that then becomes a combination of a lot of things we have a, a pretty robust scouting program mitch murray chris zitterbart brennan steinecker the guys there all work through fran taylor our assistant those G are the guys GM. i see on the other side of the, practice the, from the media yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah that's it They're the guys that are sitting on the fence at the other side those guys are all out on a constant outreach mm -hmm. looking for players as well as we are getting bombarded every single day mm -hmm. with agents that will offer that to you and when you go look at one player you might see 10 right, right? right. because you see you're looking at you film know, of the rest of the guys yeah right? and, and so and there's a lot of so so it's a it's a process where like we talked about with with building the staff you're taking every piece of it you can the biggest thing is you you start to get trusted relationships mm -hmm. clubs regions agents yeah, yeah you know that that you trust that are going to bring you not only talent but talent that fits what you're trying to do that sure. under they understand the mentality that it might take to play in colorado versus play in la right um you know whatever that is so there's a lot of um you know there's a lot of feel to this and we go fishing probably in ponds that we think are going to get the type of fish, right. you know, uh, that we want. So yeah, I've really noticed that. And, and you know, I mean, we've talked about it on this pod, but I've really noticed Brazil, right? South America, there's been a lot of success recently. Two Chileans on the first team, young Brazilian guys between Max and Lucas. Is that something that you personally have found success in? Or are you leaning on staff members that have spent time down there or... Some of all of that. Sure. I mean, look, I was in Argentina three weeks ago, and I was in awesome. in Dubai last week. That's like, so we're cool. out, <laughs> you know, we're out looking in different places sure. for talent that we yeah. can we can bring in, and and it, it again, it you use connections that you have to get yourself in the in a target rich environment sure. uh, to use a Tom Cruise term, I think from <laughs> Top like Gun, that. but like uh, but you try to get yourself in into that, and so. You know, for for us, it's just trying to utilize you know every resource we have, every connection sure. we have, to get there. And and certainly, Porg and Fran have been uh, excellent connectors on that side as well. And oh, you start cool. you start feeding off that. But uh, everybody brings their connections to the table, and we see what uh, what we can do to create pipelines. I, it, what's really interesting to me now, and you know, I know you're. 
going to ask about Danny Chacon. And, oh, yeah. But like <laughs> when you start thinking about markets like Central America and even now the Caribbean, COVID had a massive effect on, in, in some areas, bigger effects than others. If you look at Costa Rica, Panama, Honduras, mm-hmm. and then some of the island nations, they basically had to shut down from a visual standpoint during COVID because under 17 world championship, under 20 world championship didn't exist. So a player right. born in 2001, and that could be Cole Bassett too. Cole Bassett's life could be very different if he would have captained the US U-20s in the World Cup. Right. That event didn't happen. That event didn't happen for Costa Rica. It didn't happen for Panama. It didn't happen for Trinidad or Jamaica. Sure. And so you've got some players in that 2001, 2002, 2003 age group. Interesting. That haven't really been on earth because they they weren't on lighted stages. There's just like a, a, a gap in the information. Potentially. Potentially. You know, so yeah. you start digging on that and seeing where you can go. So I think it's an interesting time, and I think there's going to be more players like Danny that live in that 2001 age group or 2002 or 2003 sure. that maybe you're getting a late start on not only blossoming because training was affected by COVID for a long time, competition was affected by COVID, and the stage that they were playing on was certainly limited by COVID. So right. it's just an interesting time there. No, really. Okay, well, let's just get into it then. Danny, Daniel Chacon. That's uh, a great segue, by the way. Yeah. That is professional. Let's dive right yeah. in there. Professional, right? We are trained professionals. We are here. truly semi I noticed that. I'm not sure you were trained <laughs> by, but I. <laughs> and we never said it was good training. Yeah, we're yeah, just yeah, training. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, so he is with the Costa Rican national team right now in Qatar. Um, Hopefully peacefully resting as he comes up on match day. Let's see, what is it, 10 hours difference? It's, uh, yeah, it's like 3 in the morning. He's probably sleeping. Yeah. Uh, probably not. <laughs> probably rolling around in bed right now. Has to be. Yeah, I mean, did you talk to him before he left uh, about where, where he's... Yeah, I, I'm able to uh, you know send a message every couple of days sure. when, when he's able to get up and I don't feel like <laughs> I'm disturbing him. We'll give him one last, you know, good luck. Things, sure. are, things are good there. The, the, the culture within their group is good and... There's a lot of optimism within their group from from what we've seen. So, uh, you know, it's it's really really exciting to uh, to know that he's there and he's going to wake up this morning their time and uh, walk out into onto a really really big stage tonight in a in a situation where they get to play a team that's won a really, world cup. Really really good. Yeah. Yeah. When you. You know, you've probably watched as much film and, and studied him as much as anybody, right? What, when you started that, did you see national team, World Cup level traits in him at that, like when you started digging in there? Yeah, it's, it's really tough w- to say, oh, sure. yeah, I knew, I knew the first time I saw him. Hey, LeBron like, does it all I mean, the time. Clear, you can clearly yeah, I did, it. right? Um, <laughs> if, you throw, if you throw 10 darts, one of them has to hit eventually. Sure. Like, sure. That's right. You, you don't know how many darts. I'm almost out of darts. <laughs> but, um, but, yeah, for sure, it, you see qualities that you really like. And, you know, the, the, the competitive nature of Danny, his ability to um, – you know, to to pass, to, you know, be able to be in the play when it's going that direction. Yeah. Read and destroy the play when it's going that direction. Yeah. Well, those are some br- pretty good basic traits, whether you're a center back or, or a holding midfield player in there. Um, but I think things that start to separate him, and, and I'll be honest with you, until we started really digging in and, and knew we had a chance, then you're you're like, okay, I need to, I need to make sure that we're, we're getting this one right. And, you start realizing that the human being that's there is an incredible competitor. It's a guy that's not phased by the opponent he's going to face right? or the conditions he's going to face. No. Um, so big moments have I mean, when Costa Rica started qualifying, they were not good. And they were in a, a situation where they had to, had to chase. <laughs> they had to chase qualifying. One of the biggest matches that they had to play to get themselves in it was the match that they played against the United States. Right. He got thrown in and started against the United States, and was his job was basically to chase Christian Pulisic around. Good luck. And make sure that he doesn't go anywhere. 
and they're not best friends after that match because he, <laughs> you know, he was pretty damn successful That's at making awesome. sure that he didn't get a touch where he could face the goal and go forward. And, and, and so again, big stage against big players in this and region. Yeah. And, and it was unfazed. Then it, and then it becomes Canada and Mexico and it becomes, we've qualified for the world cup. And, you know, it was through that process. It was actually, I was texting with his agent during the U S game. And that's when it became real that we might have a shot at, um, at having him and we're starting to go, okay, we need to, we need to wrap this up pretty right, fast right, before right. Uh, sign here. Sign nobody here. else watched yeah. that game. Right. <laughs> um, and, and, but no, the situation worked in our favor. Um, and you know, we were able to work with, uh, to, to have a discussion with the Federation there and, and with Coach Suarez and, and find out what he felt was important in Danny's development. One of those things was that he was able to play first-team matches in the lead-up to World Cup. And it was an easy decision to say, look, we'll sign you. We'll loan you straight back into the first division there. So it's not a matter of breaking you into the Rapids group. It's sure. more about going in, getting your minutes. We've got a long runway you don't have a long run runway before the World Cup. And so going back to that situation um, helped him prepare for the World Cup. He got all the games in. They, they ended up winning the league um, for the first time in a long, long time at the end of the, the spring. And uh, went in, played the fall, and made a World Cup roster. And Not bad. We're awfully proud of him. Not bad for a 21-year-old kid. It's all right. In, in a group that is an extremely old group. and that's, The Ticos are tough, too. That's that's an exciting t thing too. Is the sorry? I've basically just taken over the conversation. No, I love no, it. No, it's yeah. your conversation. We're, we're just oh, yeah. I'm yeah. here for this. We're just yeah. This we're is, just the vessel to great. it. Like. But I mean, I, I think the more ex you talk about the group sure. and, and, and the exciting thing is if you look novice and goal and Kendall Waston and Brian Oviedo and and guys like that, and you start getting into Joel Campbell is like the young guy at 30 in, in the and group. And the Bennett. You do yeah. have Bennett, too, out in the wing Legend. who's been killing yeah. it. Yeah, well, so. Then, yeah, so they've got two guys in, yeah. in, 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 in Jewish and Bennett and, and uh, Aguilar that are younger guys breaking through as well. But the majority of the group, this is it. They won't see another World Cup. But Costa Rica will. As the World Cup expands, they're going to be a team that's a pretty constant group in this. And so when you think about a player like Danny, and it's a hard-nosed guy that can bring guys together and can lead, he could be not only a part of this, but a leader in that, in that national team for a long, long time. So uh, we're getting way ahead of ourselves sure. with it. Sure. Um, they need to get through to tomorrow night and see what happens. But, uh, but it's an exciting time. It's, it, it, we're, we're awfully excited to watch how this plays out. You got another uh, guy with a national team in Rob Aguirre who's with El Salvador, um, and he's been crazy fun to watch. To me, that's like, uh, I think the first time anyone talked to me about it was Emilio, actually, in the comms department. You know, of course, the El Salvadorians got us uh, stick right. together there. Yep. And, uh, I think Emilio's dad has a shrine to Rob at his house. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And uh, I dove in after that, and it is, he is exciting. Man, that was like, I think of all, I mean, you know, the, Finding success in a season where it's like no playoffs or whatever. But to me, he seems like a highlight of the R2 season. He, he's been great. I mean, you, there are guys that every time you test them, they, they may not just blow you away. But every time you test them at a new level, they just seem comfortable at that level. And Rob's one of those guys that you just keep pushing him and you put him up a level and mm -hmm. you put him up a level. And he just he's a leveler. He just, he just washes out at that level and his things are... Things are great, and he's comfortable, and then he progresses again. And he, and so he, he's kind of kept up with the pace of what's going on when he's been in Rapids 2 sessions. He's been great. When he's been in first-team sessions, he's been comfortable and competent in those sessions, and you just watch that go. He got into El Salvador's youth team into the 20s, and the next thing you know, they're saying, well, actually, we want him to come in with the first team. Love it. You know, and, and so, again, get there. The hardest thing for these players, and we're talking about Danny, we're talking about Rob, and a lot of other players that have come through the national – Adam, guys that have come through national team programs, when you're really talented, it's not necessarily getting that first look with the national team. It's about getting invited back and being right. a part and a constant part of that. And you, Sam Vine was a great example. Nobody goes through the 14s 
all the way through the first team with the national team, right? It just doesn't happen very often. And not nobody, but sure, but I mean, very, you, very you rarely was... you get into and and Vinesy was a kid that they just kept inviting back, and you'd go, okay, well, he's going to grow this year, and he was. He had a he had a spell out because of injury and some growth, and he was right back in. And yeah, starting and those are the two kind of guys that Cup? are impre- exactly. Those are the kind of guys that are impressive. Here is that once you get in, it's not about getting in; it's about staying in. Sure. And that whether that's whether that's into the professional environment, it's into the first team, or it's into the national team. That a lot of people get one shot. It's about coming back and making a career of it. Is that something you're trying to foster with uh, Next Pro, where it's like, like a kind of making that a level of of success for guys, and it's like, okay, you're here, and can you hang here, and can you move on? I hate to say it's a level of success. I think it's a stepping a stepping stone point, sure. right? It's it because what happens is. We get an academy, but one of the biggest indicators of success with guys like Vinesy, like Bassett, when, it, when you talk about guys that are currently kind sure. of on that stage, is that they progress a level, mm. but when they come back, they become clearly too good for the level or clearly sure. above the level. And, and that is, that's a big indicator that they're going to do well is that when they come backward – they do so well that you're sure. like, no, nah, just stay there. And then when they go up another level, they come back and they do well, and you're like, ah, just stay up there. You know, yeah, you just yeah, yeah. You, you, every time you expose them to something new, they come back and they not only excel at that level, they bring people forward at that level. And you know, I think those are big indicators of of future success with these guys as they sure. go. I got a question for you here. It might seem, feel a little loaded, but you've been with the team as long as anybody. Loaded up. What makes a good rapid? Yeah, the, the culture, and, and, and Robin really values this, and the, the culture in that locker room is really special. Mm-hmm. Um, those guys clearly want, have a desire to play for each other. Um, and I think, so when, when you take away everything else and you say, what's a rapid? A rapid's a guy that can walk into that locker room, fit in a culture, and play for the guy next to him and know that there's going to be a time when they are the next man up. And when they're the next man up, they will have prepared themselves to do everything they can to be successful in that. And I think we've been able to try to replicate that at the various levels of the club um, uh, because there is going to be opportunity. Rapids, Mm -hmm. by nature, who we are, we're not necessarily just going to replace with somebody from the outside. We're hoping that we can grow it from within, whether that's within the first team roster, within the second team to the first team, or within the academy to move to the second team to the first team, however that steps. And I think the biggest thing is the character of guys. Um, I, I I would hang my hat on the character of everybody in that locker room we have. You know, we have our Mr. Rapid, right? We, we said Keegan yeah, Rosenberry. We, we call him named Mr. Rapid. Keegan Rosenberry because... He, you know, to us, he kind of embodies the yeah. the hardworking, buy-in. Doesn't matter where you put me on the pitch, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull it out. Have you seen... It can be multiple guys, it can be anybody, but have you seen that at R2? Is there a Mr. R2? Well, I think our, our R2 Player of the Year in Yosuke is definitely... I love that. You know, I love that so much. He, he's a lunch pail guy. He shows up oh, every yeah. single day, and on the really good days, he gives you a smile, and on the really bad days, he puts his head down a little bit, and then he comes <laughs> back tomorrow and sure. works really hard again. And and there's just you know, it's just a a steady stream of work, showing up, doing your work, making everybody else around you better just by by being there. And and um, he's been he's been really great at that. So, uh, quick question. Um, so you you know Hanya, you know like Aguirre, Chaco. Yeah, I've, I've met him. Yeah, you've met yeah. him. You've been around. <laughs> yeah. You've seen him here and there around the building. I'm guessing. Correct. Um, as a person that's really invested in them, not just as players but as people, what's kind of what you want for them to grow within the organization and their football careers? What's kind of your goal for them, not just as football players but maybe as people as well? Mike, I mean. Our goal, it it has nothing to do with me. It has a lot to do with us as as an organization. Our goal is just simply to make sure that they have every opportunity to reach 
the level of success they're capable of because of their talent and their motivation to do that. And, you know, if, if that is, hopefully it's in our first team and contributing to our first team. And the, the bottom line is we can't promote players from the Academy or from Rapids to into the first team roster and say, well, that was cool. We've got to promote players from the Academy and into the first team roster that will allow us to be successful and help us be successful at the first team level. Just getting them there is not enough. They've got to be contributors to our first team. And again, the, the current generation, the, the guys like Cole Bassett, guys like Sam Vines, guys that have come out of that process and contributed and brought that, the first team group forward, now we're making progress. Now we're doing what we want to do. And I think that's true for every individual we have in. Can we get them to a point that will allow them to contribute to the success of our first team? When you're looking at next season and into this offseason, you said you're kind of expanding how many players you want to bring in. What do you mark success? Like what, I guess, what are your goals for success going into season two of Rapids two? Um, I think to continue to develop the daily environment. And I think we relied uh, this year and they did a tremendous job. We had, I can't even, I, I should know the number off the top of my head, but I would say we had, you know, somewhere in the neighborhood of 20 Academy guys that were in at different times wow. throughout the year. Wow. Um, we want to replace a couple, we want to make it slightly harder for them to get into training sessions so that the environment continues to be tweaked Okay. Um, every day saying. so that it becomes harder it's up the and harder yeah. to have success on a daily basis. Because what you guys will see if you come out to DU on, on Sunday is one day a week. Right. We've got five other days where guys are working their tails off to get into that situation. And, and so, you know, we've got to make sure that it's not 20% of the week is really competitive. And, and I, I think we do a good job most days, but I think sure. we want to turn up that that heat just a little bit more and ensure that every single day the training environment is something that's going to spit out the best and, yeah. and and mold the best. And I think that's that's why we would want to go a little bit deeper with Rapids 2 signed sure. players. And um, we're really proud and really happy with what's happened with the Academy contribution to what we're doing. We're going to make it harder for them. I like that. Of those guys, are there any guys kind of on the horizon, maybe under 17s, anything like that, names to kind of keep an eye, an eye out for? I mean, all our guys are all – these are Colorado guys through and through that are listening, and they you know, they kind of are looking forward. Do you have any, any – Yeah, I'm, I'm really – hes uh, until, sure. until they get into the second team, like I'm, sure. I'm hesitant to throw names sure. out there. But you can go to the list and you look at guys like Today Orazo and sure. guys that have been into national team camps, and those are immediate guys that you have – expectations on because right, they have right. had some success um whether they've been in the u.s camp or a mexico camp there you go um <laughs> you know we've and we've got guys in in both youth youth camps sure um you know we've got a lot of guys like that and so there's there's a there there's a lot of talent in that academy that mm -hmm. we need to just squeeze on out and and again that that's not good enough just to get into a camp get into a camp be successful come back and get into our professional teams and be successful. Awesome. Uh, the World Cup, uh, favorite game you've seen so far? Favorite team you've been watching? Any any play styles? Favorite or team style? I've been watching, is, you're not going to believe this, is the U.S. Sure. Um, I mean, it's yeah. an interesting roster. I mean, so young, right? Like, literally over a year younger on average than the next youngest team. Yeah, and I, I – look, we've – we showed that a little bit yesterday in, in some immaturity and in, in the way to close out a game Tough to and, finish, and, yeah. and uh, in a game that if you win, if we're, you know, we're probably one tackle away from we're all sitting around here really feeling good about the way that that's going. And now you're in a battle for your life um, and in the way you're going to approach the group. But, you know, I think my impressions of the world cup have been kind of up and down the, you know, your first couple of days when you see, you see Qatar flounder and you see, you know, situations where Iran, th those types of things are scary because you're going to expand the World Cup after this. But then you come back into today and you see a Saudi Arabia, you see a Tunisia, yeah, and awesome. you, see you see countries like that 
have success and be competitive on this stage. And you're like, all right, we're not that far off because I, I think you don't want to see a watered down version of this when we get to the U S and the expansion on it next year. And I think that's something interesting for me to watch, but I, I, I know it was zero zero, but the Tunisia game would, I had a great the, time watching the it. pace of that game. And, and the fact that you're, you, it, it was just, it was entertaining to watch it from my chair um, to see how that was going. And, and so watching some of these countries kind of come up and, and really perform on the on that stage and, and maybe minimizing the number of countries that come in and fall flat on their face is uh, uh, something that I'm looking out for. Yeah. Seeing Erickson on the field, too, after what happened in the Euros was, to me, one of the moments of the tournament, really. I mean, yeah, I mean, look, he's a long way from what, what was that only maybe 14, 15 months ago? Um, and, you know, I know, I know, it, well, I don't know. It, it's got to be sure. some just it's an incredible moment for them. It's an incredible moment for anybody that, that witnessed, you know, anything that happened related to that. And, and it's one of those cool human stories. You know, you just, there's always that thing in the back of your head. I, ho- I hope we don't have to see that again. And right, I certainly right. hope you don't have to see that again out of him. But, um, you know, uh, what, a, what a story that is. Yeah, I, uh, I mean, I'm a United guy. Obviously, I'm biased, but it, it was really cool to see. Um, we, we always kind of wrap up these shows with just a little quick hitter questions, games, kind of get to know you kind of stuff. Um, you said it's you've a little been in, late for that now. Sure. Yeah. You say you've been in Colorado for a very long time now. I have. Which is great. So have, us. So have we, Colorado, uh, Denver native over here. Born and raised, house. never left a day. Um, Excellent. <laughs> Never left today. Yeah, right. Uh, I mean, I left New Mexico a couple of times. I like the beach, but yeah. never lived any other place sure. but, the, but Denver. You don't um, have to explain yourself. It's okay. Do you it feels have... like I do because he's attacking who it's I am. Your, it's your show. It's his, it's his show. Do it's his show. He's in charge. I am very um, offended right now oh by gosh. Mitch. Uh, that's fine. That's, that's kind of the bit at this point, really. Um, favorite mountain town in Colorado? Oh. If you if you're like I got to get up to the mountains for a little bit, where do you go? Uh, you a hiker, skier, anything like that? Probably steamboat. Yeah, great uh, choice. But any place will do. Sure. The, 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 yeah, get up, get out of the metro area. For have a you climbed while. a fourteener? I have climbed a couple of fourteeners. Which ones? I, I've had Beerstead. Uh, I mean, everybody's climbed that, right? Sure. Uh, yeah, I think my grandma climbed that one, so <laughs> that was easy. Uh, you know, so I, I'm I'm. Uh, I'm a, a knee replacement type guy, sure. so uh, I, I keep it easy. Yeah I, yeah, I did it, got to the bottom, and felt really good about myself. And that's, that's awesome. That's what. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, been to Red Rock shows? Oh yeah. What would you say your highlights would be there? Uh, well, my favorite band Rush saw them there, <laughs> uh, but I'll tell you, the, the, yeah, dude, the uh, the show that was maybe most incredible there was Coldplay. Okay. May uh, started a little bit of snow, a little bit of sleet. Little, it was just a crazy cool environment. Sure. And lasers and everything. Cool show. A there. storm at Red Rocks and then letting it clear out is one of the coolest moments when it's like uh, finally clears up. That um, was one of those nights where I felt like I was from Colorado at that point. You know? Yeah, I, totally. I, I, was, I was now a native. I'd seen it. Um, you guys with the bumper stickers won't let me in, but I understand. <laughs> I don't have the bumper sticker. Uh, I don't need it. I, neither do I, man. Green chili? I'm yes here for no? everybody. Oh, yeah. Yeah? Do you have a favorite green chili spot? No. Whatever Good. gets delivered to my desk at work, Love probably that. that's about where lunch goes. Love that. Yeah. Love that. Um, let's see. Yaya, you got any? Um, I have some would you rather questions that I want to figure out what you would rather do. Oh. All right. You ready? I have no idea. I, this I don't going. know if oh, I'm ready this right is now. Oh, yeah, yeah, bud. Would you rather coach Messi or Ronaldo? Messi. Would you rather score the winning goal yeah. or block the game saving goal? Score the winning goal. Love that. Wake Glory up hounds. early or stay up super late to watch your team. Like if your team's playing 3 a.m. in this World Cup, are you staying up or waking up? Oh. Uh, wake up. Would you rather play barefoot but everybody else has cleats or you have to play with a uh, bowling ball? Barefoot. Uh, Who would you rather fight, a goalie or a striker? A goalie? You probably couldn't catch me. (laughs) 
Smart. I think goalies are too crazy. I disagree on this one wholeheartedly. Now we're going to get goalies a little... Goalies are wild. Yeah, goalies are... I actually <laughs> wouldn't fight a striker. I think they're a little no, bit more... I thought you were talking about fighting a soccer player. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> well, well, guys, I'm just joking. Just joking. He is not joking. Spice. If you're, if you're it. watching, Will... Catch um, it, give it back to our team. How freaking hard is that? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, two more. Uh, jersey tucked or untucked? Untucked. Love it. Play in 100-degree weather or snow? 100 degrees. And then real quick hitters here. We're going to go into Denver sports. John Elway or Pay Manning? I can't answer that in Colorado. Uh, I'm a Peyton Manning guy. Carmelo Anthony or Nikola Jokic? Jokic. Joe Sackick or Nathan McKinnon? Ooh, I'm oh. old. Joe Sackick. Love that. Charlie Blackman or Larry Walker? Larry Walker. Girl. Let's go. With a little crazy train coming in in the background, right? That's right. That's Dude. right. I like nice. his walkout song. Nice. He's nice. Canadian, too. Yeah? So there you go. Shout out. Hey, they're playing tomorrow. They, I think they're the noon game tomorrow against Belgium. That's an interesting one. That is. Who do you like in that one? Uh, I like Belgium in the game. I, I think Canada will make it very competitive yeah. all the way across the group. So that okay, team. Canada's made a, a, a heck of a lot of progress uh, at the national team level, and it's fun to see some guys that we see every single day uh, sure. be a part of that. It's so interesting to me because this is kind of like the opening of the golden generation, right, for, for USMNT. And to kind of see, like, is this the last run of the Belgian golden generation with De Bruyne? And it definitely Coutoir is. And, I, and all I those guys who are so up. fun to watch. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're, they're special uh, as individuals. We'll see if they can bring it together as a sure. collective. Sure. Uh, yeah, yeah. You got any plugs over there? Uh, just follow Rapids, too, and all the great things that they do over there at the Rapids organization. Sure. You got anything you want to plug? No, listen, you guys. Love it. Uh, Let's go. I was here yesterday for the match, uh, U.S. match. Yeah. I would encourage everybody to get out here and have a blast. I'd say be here by uh, 9 at the absolute latest if you want to guarantee yourself a table on Friday for Black Friday. There's an ads game at noon. There's the U.S. versus England at noon. We're going to be packed out. Uh, I believe we have a sp- – can we announce our player on right now? Is that cool, Omar? Uh, Ollie Laraz is going to be joining the post game show. We had uh, Cole Bassett on last time. Um, you're going to have all sorts of the Rapids crew out here, um, and that's been great. It's been so fun to, to to see that partnership kind of grow, and and what you guys have been able to come in with the decorations and the merch and the, and this place is decked out. It's so cool. Yeah. And, and show up, show up, please, come please here and show watch. up, show up. Um, other than that, you know the drill. Uh, uh, like, subscribe. Five star reviews only. If you're not going to leave a five star review, why even bother? Like, what's the point? Just find something better to do. Uh, and other than that, the way we end everything, the way we end every single show we do, we say it, it's on our scarves, but we say, up the pits. <laughs>